Well, good morning and uh, welcome to the video sermon. Thank you for gathering with me uh, from the safety and comfort of your own home. Uh, I wanted to say welcome Graceview, welcome St. Andrews Brampton, welcome St. Andrews Sterling, welcome friends from the wider circle of life. It's good to to know that this is making a difference for you, that you're finding it helpful. That's the feedback I've had. So thank you for the lovely feedback. A couple of people have asked me this week how my hair situation is going. It's not good. So I thought I'd say just just for, for fun, I thought I would uh, share a bit with you about this. Shaved hair does not grow out nicely. It grows straight out from your scalp until it gets long enough and heavy enough to lie down flat and look like a normal person's hair. Um, so th this situation is gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. The top part I actually wanted to grow out um, and it's reached that stage where normally I just get really annoyed and ask my hairdresser to cut it back. So I ordered some uh, hair bands from Amazon this week and they came there are three stages to putting the hairband on, and I need it for preaching or else I'll just be fiddling with my hair the whole time. Um, the first stage is Rambo. The second stage is insane hair, like, uh, you know, a la um, Einstein. And the third stage is, well, that's as good as it's gonna get. So let's just do this. So first we have Rambo. And Rambo uh, means that you gotta get all the little pieces out from underneath. Okay, that's probably good. Then we have insanity. I thought of just preaching like this and not saying anything about it. That would have made me laugh. That's insanity. And then you sort of tuck it around. And that's as good as it gets because the, the crazy porcupine grow out here is not going to uh, go away. Okay, we should probably get to the sermon. I have a number of things to say. Um, first, I want to thank Susan Chop for doing our video reading. If you would like to do one, you are welcome to. Um, it requires that you have a way of recording yourself and enough Wi-Fi to be able to send a video. And um, if, if that's something that you think you can take on, I can help talk you through that. And I would be glad to have uh, another voice for, for our reader. I want to say thanks to Eric, too, for uh, playing a couple of hymns for us that you can sing along with. I've provided the words on the blog, and I hope that you will enjoy singing those. I know it's not the same as us all being together, but um, we're just trying to continually... It sneaks back up on you. <sighs> we're just trying to continually give you uh, tools and um, elements of worship. I wanted to say a word about Nova Scotia. This has been a hard week for our country. It's compounded by the heartbreak that our own Earl Nixon lost a niece in those attacks. It's very hard to talk about. Um, I would ask that you would be praying for Earl's family but also uh, for, for the families of all of the victims and for the people of Nova Scotia as a whole. I think they could use our prayers. And I'll have a little bit more to say about prayer later on. Um, if you didn't get to see the, the vigil, the vigil, virtual vigil for Nova Scotia, I'm gonna put a link to that um, so you can see it. It was very well done. And for me, it, it really did bring that sense of closure that, that funerals give us when we've lost someone we loved or when a tragic event has taken place. Okay, so now we get on to the sermon itself. Um, we are looking at the passage that Susan read for us, the Emmaus Road story. And um, we're just going to talk through some, some points in this uh, passage. So uh, as this scene opens, two of the disciples are uh, walking along the road to Emmaus. They are leaving Jerusalem and heading for a town called Emmaus. And one of the commentators I read this week put it beautifully. Uh, they said, they're just getting out of Dodge. They are just getting out of town, wanting to get away from 
uh, the grief of what has taken place because for them their friend and teacher has been killed horribly and violently and they don't know the end of the story yet they don't know that Jesus is risen they don't know that it's going to be okay for them they're just in that moment of bewilderment and loss and grief and they're probably a little afraid too because Jesus was arrested and those authorities were trying to stamp out this movement that Jesus had begun so they just kind of want to get away they just kind of want to get out of there there's a, a in verse 24 they are uh, talking uh, to Jesus who has come to them on the road and they're explaining what happened and they you know they say that uh, on Sunday, the women went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. And then they told the disciples that they'd seen angels saying that Jesus was alive. And then in verse 24, then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And that's, uh, you know, I, I hear in that sort of the bewilderment, bewilderment and the grief that they're feeling. That, that they have a little spark of hope, but their companions did not see Jesus. And there's just this ache in that. So they want to get out of Dodge. And who can blame them? Who wouldn't want to run away uh, being faced with such horrible things? As the Janet and I discussed this, one of the conversations we got into was about our own avoidance. Uh, you know, we might have talked a little bit about binge watching. I have not fallen down the Tiger King rabbit hole, but I feel like it's coming for me. But we did both talk about Disney Plus and binge watching The Mandalorian. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Uh, it's, it's a TV show. It's, it's Star Wars. It's fantastic. Watch it. Um, but our own, you know, ways that we're finding to avoid the grief and the trauma of uh, what our country and our world is going through right now. And I, I said to her that, that I, since this began, I've been unable to sit down and, and write a sermon as I normally would. And so what I've been doing is uh, I've got my cute little notebook and I do handwritten notes uh, to talk through. So when you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, but I just can't settle enough to write a sermon the way I normally would. Traumatic events have this way of making normal impossible for us. So what do you do? You avoid. You get out of dodge. And there's a part of this that is the faithfulness of Jesus as he shows up. That he meets them on the way in the midst of their trying to avoid, he comes to them. And uh, JP talked a little bit last week about how uh, Jesus comes to us. And I thought that was beautiful and uh, still something that's resonating with me. We, uh, one of the hymns I chose for this week is um, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. And I chose it because of that line in the final verse that says I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side because Jesus is the faithful companion he walks with us even when we can't recognize him, even when we are running away, even when we grieve, even God bless him when we doubt. And not only that, he not only shows up, he begins to speak with the disciples. He engages them in conversation and he actually calls them foolish and uh, slow to believe what the scriptures have said and Jesus always called people on their junk. So, because you have to acknowledge that something is broken before it can begin to heal, right? You have to acknowledge the wound before you can bind it up. And so Jesus calls them on that, but then he calls them on that, not just to sort of like poke the wound or, or uh, you know, 
point out their frailty. He points it out and he calls them on it because Jesus never wants to leave us in our frailty. He wants to move us forward into faith. And I, that's again this faithfulness of Jesus that he won't leave us bewildered and broken and grieving and getting out of dodge. He's going to bring us to, um, to his presence and to, to a stronger, better faith. And then Jesus is ready to, to leave them, uh, to, to walk away, as it were. Uh, the scripture says, um, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. And then, in verse 29, But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. I love that they strongly urged him. They invite him in, but it's not that wishy-washy invite. Like, have you ever done this with people? You're like, you're like, you know, you should kind of invite them to hang out, but you don't really want to. So you're like, we should get together. And you leave it there and nothing ever happens. Uh, that's an introvert's trick. That's not the kind of invite they extend to Jesus. They invite him in. They strongly urge him to come in with them, with, uh, with them. And there's a piece of faith that is that we have to invite Jesus in. Um, Jesus will come to us, but he will also give us the right to let him pass on by, to go further and go on to someone else. He gives us that freedom. We have to take the action of inviting him in of strongly urging him to stay with us. So if you're struggling to feel the presence of Christ in the midst of this pandemic, I wonder if it might be because you need to strongly urge him to stay with you. And that's not meant to be victim blaming. Trust me, I understand the brokenness that makes it hard to feel that Jesus is here with us as we go through these difficult days, as, as our grief is compounded by acts of violence that are beyond imagination, I understand that. But I would strongly urge you to strongly urge him to be with you. And I'd also urge you to invite others to pray with you about that, to pray for you about that. You know, whenever uh, these tragedies take place, there's a phrase that comes up, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Nova Scotia. And then there's this pushback against that, that thoughts and prayers aren't action and that we need to take action. And it kind of makes me angry because I do believe prayer is action. Um, I, and I believe that we were made for prayer, that connecting with the divine is part of what it means to be human, uh, that we are made for that. And when we connect with the divine for ourselves, when we pray on our own and in our own practice, that is a very good thing. But when we pray for others, that is holy. That is a holy thing. That's what it is to be the church. And it is beautiful on a whole different level. So I urge you to pray uh, for others and, and to invite others to pray for you. To, uh, to give yourself the gift of other people's prayer. Jesus goes in with the disciples after they strongly urge him, and they break bread, and they recognize him. And they say, you know, weren't our hearts burning in us before? Like, they couldn't put their finger on it, but something was happening as they walked along the road with him. But it's not until they break bread with him that they recognize him. There's just something about communion, isn't there? Uh, communion is one of our two sacraments in the Presbyterian Church, uh, baptism being the other one. And sacrament is kind of a hard word for people to really grasp onto and really understand. Uh, it's one of those things people struggle with. But I love the uh, definition that Andrew Peterson gave me years ago, uh, not to me personally, but when I was listening to him speak about sacrament. And he said, 
that a sacrament is an outer sign of an inner reality or truth. That thing we do in communion where we take bread and we take wine and, you know, there's action involved, you've got to break the bread, there's taste and smell and physicality to it. And it shows that Christ died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. So, in these hard times, one of the things that we are longing for is companionship. And Jesus is our forever friend. Jesus is our faithful companion. Jesus is the one who is with us even when we can't recognize him. Who brings us to a place where we can recognize him. Who is with us every step of the way. God bless you. Amen.